Bracha is Dav Samach Beis. The Gemara tells us that Rekiva snuck into the bathroom with his Rebbe, Rebbe Yeshua, and he learned three halachas. You don't face the Beis Hamikdash. You reveal yourself in a sitting position, and when using toilet paper, you use your left hand, not your right hand. Because the Torah was giving with HaKadosh Baruch Hu's right hand, you put on tefillin with your right hand, your right hand constantly comes close to your mouth, you show the signals of the time and the trap to the Valkyrie with your right hand, and you write the Torah with your right hand. Says Benazit to Rebekiva, isn't that Azos to go into the bathroom with your Rebbe? Says Rebekiva, Torah hi. I need to learn the halachas. In fact, Ben Azai was the Talmud of Rebekiva, snuck into the bathroom with the Rebekiva, but didn't learn anything new. The same halachas that Rebekiva told him over. The Gemara says a famous story. Rav Kahana hid underneath Rav's bed, and he heard Rav first talking to his wife, then laughing, and finally doing his strachim. And Rav Kahana screams out from underneath the bed, Rebbe, it's a muscle to somebody that's starving. He says, Rav, is that you, Kahana? What are you doing here? Get out! It's not their cheretz. Says Rav Kahana, Toyrihi, Vilumla Dani In fact, we learn halachas from what Rav Kahana observed. A person who uses tznios in the bathroom will be saved from snakes, scorpions, and shadim, and some say even from bad dreams. There was a famous bathroom in Tferio that had a very bad reputation. Even if two people went in there together, they would be damaged from the mazikim. Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi didn't have any fears, they walked in there by themselves. And they weren't damaged because they used extreme measures of tznios and they were quiet in the bathroom. Yisurim can be overcome with shtika, meaning a person who doesn't complain and accepts the yisurim upon himself and davens for the yisurim. The Gemara tells us that Abai was brought up by this woman who brought up a small sheep to go into the bathroom to accompany Abai in the bathroom. So he shouldn't be damaged by the shadim. And the reason why she didn't give him a goat is because there are shadim that are similar to goats, and it wouldn't work with a goat. Before Rava became the Rosh Hashiva, the Gemara calls him a Melech, his wife used a bell to scare away the Shadim. But once he became a Rosh Hashiva, he was more susceptible to the Shadim, so she created, his wife, who was the daughter of Chizik, created a window, and she put her hand on Rava's head. If there is a fence, one is allowed to relieve himself right beyond the fence, even though other people might hear him. And if it's an open field, he has to distance himself so nobody hears. Another lesson in the Gemara is that if there's a fence, he must distance himself so nobody hears. And if they can see him, he must distance himself all the way till they can't see him. There's a lot about people who watch oil and fruits for taharas that Amiharets shouldn't come and touch them. And the Gemara tells us, since they have to be nearby so nobody comes to touch, they made a cool and they said they could relieve themselves right beyond the fence or in a place where they could watch the oil, as long as nobody can see them revealing themselves. Gemara tells us a story, there was a person who gave a hespit, a eulogy, and he said on the dead person, he said, wow, he was such a tsanua. He was very modest. Says, Rav Nachman, how could you say that? Did you observe him in the bathroom? That's where you could tell if a person is a tsanua. Now, why was Rav Nachman so makbid on the hespit? Says the Gemara, because if you lie in your hespit about the dead, they punish the dead. They open up the book and they say, well, is this guy really that good? They punish him and they punish the, the people that hear the hespit and the person that gives the hespit. As long as the people agree with the hespit, they get punished. The Gemara tells us a person should use tznios at night when he goes to the bathroom the same way he does during the day. If he uses a corner, he goes into the corner during the day, he should use the same corner at night. But not necessarily does he have to go the same distance into the field as he does during the day. The Gemara says it's better for a person to try to go to the bathroom early morning and evening when nobody's around rather than going during the day when he has to go out really far to use the bathroom. In those days, they would manipulate the opening before they went to the bathroom. The Gemara says it could cause great damage of Kishuf. So one should do it only in a standing position, not in a sitting position. And if he does it in a sitting position, he should say this whole thing of loyli, loyli, tachtem, loy tachtem, loy hanev, loy mehani, etc. Ben Azay says a person should not sleep on the ground. Some explain that means without clothing. He should not sit on a beam because he might fall off. Sleeping and relieving oneself in the bathroom is great when done by Amud HaShachar. Bar Kapar would sell words and sayings, and one of the, the things he used to say is, eat and drink when you're hungry and thirsty, don't wait until after you lose your appetite. And go to the bathroom when you feel that you need to go to the bathroom, and don't wait too long. And sell your figs when you hear that bell, even if it's not your figs, even if it's your father's figs, he would want you to sell it. And it's very interesting, I noticed it says, Karna de Today we're talking about 
Corona in Rome. Abaya says, when he told his Talmidim, when you go out into the fields, for whatever reason, be careful not to look to the sides because it might be women or some say men that are relieving themselves on the sides and it's not their heret to look. The Gemara tells a story of Abba went to the bathroom and he made a snorting noise as if to ask the person in the bathroom who was Rav Safra, is somebody in there? Rav Safra says, come on in. So Rav Abba afterwards told Rav Safra, why did you talk? You're not allowed to talk in the bathroom. The Gemara says Rav Safra thought that Rav Abba had an emergency and it was very important to have him come in. Another story, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Lazar was in the bathroom and a Roman pushed him out. And in fact, the Gemara says a snake came and took out his insides and killed him. And said Rabbi Lazar, there's a pasuk, Ve'etin Adam Tachtecha, I gave you another man instead of you, and you could also read it, Edom, a Roman. The Gemara says about Shaul, he went into the cave and David had an opportunity to kill him, and he didn't. And the Gemara says, the pasuk says, Vamar laharogcho vasocha salav, vatocha salav. But it's talking about a third person, not David HaMelech. And the answer is, it's because Baruch had Rahmanas and Shaul, because Shaul used extreme measures of Tzniyas when he went to the bathroom. He would go a cave within a cave, a fence after a fence, and he would make a sukkah. He would surround himself with a tent of clothing in order to beat Tzniyua. All David HaMelech did was he cut his coat. But then he was punished because he embarrassed his mevaza clothing. So later on, when he was really old and they tried to warm him up with clothing, it didn't work. Hashem said, David HaMelech said to Hashem in Tehillim, he says, Im Hashem is sitcha, if Hashem tripped you. So Hashem punished David HaMelech and tripped up David. Everybody knows that when you count Klai Yisrael, you have to count with coins. David HaMelech didn't count Klai Yisrael like that. And what happened was in Magaifa, 70,000 people died. How long did it last? Just a few hours. From the morning when you shech the Tamid until Zrika Sadav the Tamid. Rabbi Yechman says, until Chatzais. HaKadosh Baruch told the Malach, give me the best of them. And, uh, and in fact, he took Avishai ben Suriya, he killed him. The Torah says, Vayinochem. Navi says, Vayinochem. HaKadosh Baruch was calm. What, what calmed HaKadosh Baruch down, so to speak? Machloik, as Rav says, HaKadosh Baruch taught it by Yaakov Avinu. Shmuel says, HaKadosh Baruch taught it by Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak says, it was the Kesef Kippur. And Yerushan says, he thought about the Beis Hamikdash, and that calmed him down. We learned in the Mishnah, a person, a person should not make the Beis Hamikdash a kapandria, a shortcut. Some say, Adam Akifna, a roundabout, a shortcut. If a person goes into a shul, not in order to make it a shortcut, or to daven, that's okay. If there was a shortcut where the shul was built, you're allowed to go through there. We learned in the Mishnah that you're not allowed to spit in the Beis Hamikdash, Kalva from the fact you're not allowed to wear shoes in the Beis Hamikdash. You're not allowed to spit in our days on Harabayas, and if you do, it's as if you're spitting in the eye of HaKadosh Baruch Kaviyach. Rav says, but in a shul, you're allowed to spit, because if you're in your own home, you're allowed to wear shoes and spit, so too in a shul. Have a wonderful day.